Item number 10. Item number 10, resolution to adopt and appropriate the 2021 budget. Nikki Simmons, County Controller, Financial Services. Good morning. And, and, and before Nikki uh, gets into her presentation, um, you know, I just, I, I said some nice stuff about her and I feel like we do have to do some checks and balances here as well. So if we could give her a little bit of grief uh, during this budget, budget presentation, I think that'd be very appropriate. Uh, Ms. Good Simmons. Good morning, Commissioner Nikki Simmons, County Controller. I was gonna start off by thanking you, Commissioner Waller, for reminding everyone, including the public, of my most stressful week <laughs> this year, where I worried daily if my application for the CARES funding went through. Um, but good to know that it did, and we're using that money for the best interests of our community. Um, and I still have a job, my boss just reminded me. <laughs> behind me. <laughs> um, no, I, you know, truly, that just shows the passion and dedication associated with wanting to do the right things for this community. And, um, you know, appreciate uh, seriously every single effort you put forward that way, uh, Ms. Cassidy, and your entire team. Thank you, commissioners. We, we appreciate the support. I, I have a, we have a great team um, in the budget and finance area and across the county um, with all of our finance liaisons and, and they've all worked very hard to ensure that we properly use that money and, and get things done for our citizens this year. Um, I am super excited to be here today. Um, and that sounds a little nerdily excited, but I am. It, this is the culmination of almost a half a year of work, or a little over half a year of work, uh, for the budget and finance teams. Um, so I wanted to start out quickly, um, just to say a couple thank yous to um, the people who were involved in putting this together. Almost every county employee somehow is involved in that, so I wanna say thank you to them, but specifically, all the countywide elected officials and all the executive directors who meet with me consistently um, to try to come to a consensus uh, on what we can do for the best with our funding, um, as well as um, this board, all of the commissioners, you guys have been amazing to work with this year um, and really appreciate you and your support and your guidance. Uh, and also the budget team um, headed by Lori Clayton. Um, there's a lot of behind the scenes work that you don't see, um, but there's a lot of people crunching some numbers, making sure that we have everything correct. So I wanted to say thank you to them. Um, we're really lucky to have them. So we're here today to to uh, adopt and appropriate the 2021 budget. Um, this is our fifth and final budget hearing today. <clears throat> we held budget hearings on October 6th, October 20th, October 22nd, and November 17th, at which citizens had the opportunity to participate in the budgeting process. Uh, we have had our uh, preliminary balance budget open for inspection since October 6th. Um, any changes that were made in public session to the preliminary balance budget are included in this document. The only change that was guided by the commissioners was $15,000 annually to code enforcement. Um, everything else um, is remaining in this document. Um, and the overall funding for the uh, total budget for the county for 2021 is $406,610,128. Um, the budget document is available online um, for everybody to see. We posted it this morning. Um, and so when you look, you're looking for this orange document, um, and I won't go through it um, page by page because everyone's seen most of it with the preliminary balance budget. Um, this slide that everyone's used to seeing, uh, we remained $245,184 in our roadmap, uh, which is gonna remain in fund balance until further appropriated. So um, that's all I have to adopt the first resolution. Okay, do we have uh, questions for Ms. Simmons? Commissioner Williams, it looks like you had a question, no? I do. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the budget team for all of their work. Uh, it's, it's very amazing. Um, I'm certainly glad that uh, Ms. Simmons and I didn't have the same jacket today. I worried about that as she was coming up. Um, I did I did want to, you know, I'm a bit worried that a property tax of only $75 per citizen in El Paso County is uh, not low enough. So next year we might try to get that lower. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just teasing you, Nikki. But this is obviously every year. I'm so proud to stand behind our employees. Um, our budget, we are the, I think, the most efficient county in the state. Uh, we're innovative, we step up to the task, our employees step up to the task, and it's a fantastic budget. I am intending to support it. Thank you. 
Thanks, any other questions? Uh, Commissioner Vanderwerf. Uh, just uh, comments as well, and uh, thank you for the opportunity, Mr. Chair. Uh, Nikki and the team, but really the entire county team, thank you so much for this incredible amount of work. And talk about a challenge. I mean, this year is a year for the record books with no doubt an enormous amount of massive number of changes in the budget, the CARES Act funding that has come down and all of the challenges that we have had. And despite all of that, we banded together, we worked hard, and I would say we had a budget deliberation process here for the 2021 budget that had the least number of changes by the time you brought it up here to this board. We only made some very, very minor changes and uh, that was actually an easier process this year than I think most of the other processes that I've been in uh, since being a, a commissioner. And doing it that way, getting that level of cooperation in a, in a really tough year. And what it says to me is the teams working together and firing on all cylinders, and it, it's just obvious that that is happening. So I'm just gonna express my appreciation and I will be supporting uh, this budget. So thank you very much to the team. Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, uh, you know, thanks for, to staff and Nikki uh, and everybody just for the great work. Uh, the finance budget uh, department is, uh, as always, do outstanding work uh, and on this year's budget, especially in light of the COVID-related situation that we had uh, for funding uh, uh, this year for and for finalizing this year and for next year. So, uh, I do, however, have an issue, one issue with the budget, uh, which I have spoken publicly on uh, for, uh, many times over the past three years. Uh, additional funding for the I-25 toll line. Uh, I absolutely, absolutely appreciate the need for the I-25 widening. I've supported it on the uh, PPRTA, even multiple changes that we had to make sure it was funded properly because it, it does provide improved safety, uh, absolutely. And, and it's uh, gonna be a great improvement. Uh, but the additional funds from El Paso County are not needed by the state for the project completion, uh, whereas those three and a half million dollars would be better utilized on our own county maintained roads via our public works department. I have been on the record many, many times, uh, town halls uh, and at, at other times that I would vote against additional funding of the toll lanes unless, as we did for the initial seven and a half million dollars, put it to a vote of the people uh, for the additional funding. Additional funding is not needed, nor is it mandated to complete the project. At every public meeting I attended on this, uh, this distinction was made on the record and indeed our own staff and attorneys have indicated no additional funds were ever guaranteed. Also, it is widely known I was excluded in information information regarding the original I-25 grant request and toll lanes until weeks after it was submitted to the federal government and I was excluded from a summer's worth of updates from the State Transportation Commission on the proposal that year. Finally, El Paso County maintained roads are in more need of these funds than the state. Indeed, the state over the, these past four years have passed more and more unfunded mandates to us in all counties, forcing us to pay more and more of what used to be their costs. These unfunded mandates come to millions of dollars in additional cost to El Paso County each year. I do not believe we should reward the state with scarce county dollars that could be better spent on our own county word, uh, roads. Uh, so I will be standing by my word, the word I've given for the last three years, and I stand by my word, I think everybody knows that, uh, which I have stated publicly the past three years to oppose additional funding for the I-25 expansion unless it was included uh, by a vote of the people. And so I will be voting against this budget because of the additional toll lane funding. Thank you. Uh, and uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. You know, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, you've um, done, done a great job, I think, of uh, articulating where you are on this I-25 issue and, and certainly done it uh, uh, numerous times. You know, this is one of those areas where we disagree and, and that's fine, you know. Um, I think uh, sometimes in good governance that happens and, and issues should be uh, discussed, cussed, and uh, turned over in every way in order to, to come up with good solutions for um, the people of our community, and uh, in this case, the people of El Paso County. You know, I, I disagree um, with your uh, assertion. Well, I, I agree with you uh, that certainly the state probably could have come up with that additional three million dollars. Uh, no, no, no doubt that that could have happened. But, but here's the reality that we live in. Here's here's where we are now as a, a community, as a government, um, as a um, entity that partners with others in order to get stuff done. 
You know, the state had a transportation list put together of um, uh, important projects that needed to be moved uh, on the dial uh, going out into the future. And the reality for us is this. Uh, the I-25 gap project wasn't on it. It wasn't on the list in any way. Um, it, it, it wasn't there. Um, there were many other projects, and, and there are certainly scarce resources uh, at the state level, at the federal level, uh, in order to complete these projects. And so we weren't on that list, not at all. Um, and so in, in order for us to get this uh, public safety nightmare, and that's what I'm going to call it because I believe that's what it is. In order to get this public safety nightmare taken care of, because remember at the time, um, politicians were saying this was 10 years out in the future before we were going to get any movement on this project at all. Um, and the reality for us today is because of what we did in El Paso County, because of the lead that we took, this project's going to get done next year. Um, you know, literally, minimum 10 years before anybody thought it could have happened. That's gonna save countless lives in our community. And while it's not saving necessarily countless lives on specific county roads, it's saving countless community lives, lives of El Paso County citizens. Um, so, so in order for us to get this project number one on the list, and then number two, move to the head of the list, it took partnerships. Partnerships uh, mean that um, different agencies and entities coming together to put dollars um, together in order to uh, accomplish the goal. And, and in our case, that meant coming up with some local funding, it meant coming up with state funding, it meant coming up with federal funding, uh, it meant coming up, uh, other communities uh, coming up with funding as well to include our local RTA and also uh, Douglas County. Um, that that's how we had to, to, to get this project done. So, so while I agree with you, Mr. Vice Chair, that uh, the state could probably come up with that additional three million bucks, uh, I think this project never even gets off the ground unless we agree to put uh, local funding in this. And once we agree to put that local funding in, uh, I think we gotta kinda see it through. Well, not kinda, we have to um, see it through. Uh, and I think that we get into a little bit of a dangerous precedent if we don't um, see these sort of things through. I think then we lose out on funding for other projects down the road. And I gotta tell you, that's something I'm not interested in at all. Um, because it, you know, in, in, in my area, uh, the powers runs through uh, my district uh, and the powers corridors there. And let me tell you, that's a state highway and it's a state highway that needs a billion dollars in um, expansion and repairs uh, over the next 20 years. And so I don't wanna miss out on other partnership opportunities uh, in order to get that done as well. So uh, I, you know, um, uh, 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 I agree with you on the issues related to um, tolling. Uh, I wish this was not going to be a toll lane. I think it shouldn't be a toll lane. I think that um, our citizens, um, uh, you know, put forward their um, uh, dollars, and and we should be able to uh, use those dollars in order to uh, fund the operation of this highway, as opposed to uh, creating more revenue through tolls. Um, but the reality is that the policy moving forward for the Colorado Department of Transportation is that any new capacity they build is probably gonna be tolled um, just because they're in their mind that the dollars aren't there for transportation. And actually, uh, I would say this, I think that they're right. Uh, CDOT doesn't have the dollars necessary to uh, be able to impact the transportation infrastructure the way they're supposed to. And that's because of uh, all the mandates at the state level. Um, you know, transportation's the one thing that you can cut, uh, one thing where uh, discretionary spending can happen. Um, so, so transportation loses out every time. Transportation and higher education, uh, the, the two issues that, that tend to lose out because gotta fund Medicaid, gotta fund K through 12, gotta fund the prisons, gotta front fund the um, judicial system, you know, and, and, and things of that nature. So when uh, times are tough, like right now, um, what gets cut? Transportation and higher education. So, um, 
So yeah, I, I agree with you. I think they could have probably come up with this extra three million on their own. Um, but, but at the same time, I, I think it is right for us to do it because this project never would have got off the ground if we hadn't committed that local funding. And I, I um, wanna just commend all the partners that came together uh, to make that happen because it is truly something that has saved a tremendous number of lives in our community. Anything else? Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Um, thank you, sir. You know, I think um, to echo my colleague's comments about the tremendous work that Nikki and her team have done on this year's budget, I think I see an overarching theme, which is, and probably goes into um, the comments we just heard about, about I-25 as well. You know, this year, our budget was a little bit different because it's not just about what is necessary. Um, it's about what is the right thing to do. Um, and over and over and over again, this board made that decision. The right thing to do was to pass along CARES Act money to our local partners. The right thing to do was to um, come up with a grant program to help out our small businesses and provide them with some relief. Um, the decisions that we make here are not always as um, as simple as numbers on a spreadsheet um, or checking the box on, on a local match here or there. It's not always about what's absolutely necessary. We always have to keep our eye on, on what's efficient and what is the right um, use of taxpayer dollars. But at the end of the day, it's pretty clear sometimes what the right thing to do is. And I think I-25 and all the other um, things that you'll find in this budget, um, we've, we've made decisions on, on what was the right thing to do for our community. So um, I kind of wanted to bring the, the focus back to the tremendous job that our budget um, and financial team have done of hearing that message from us um, numerous times and, and applying it in a way that comes up with a budget that I think our citizens can be very proud of. Um, so I look forward to voting for this budget and I also certainly appreciate the uh, the debate that has continued for years now. Um, I think that we also have to consider, you know, we've got highways 94, 115, 24, 83. Those are all um, state highways that, that we're going to need to partner with CDOT again um, on in the future. And we're going to need to have them know that, that locally, um, we are going to do what it takes to get those to the top of the list um, and fight for El Paso County when they have state highways all over the state to, to consider funding as well. Um, we need to make sure that um, they know that we are good on our commitment. And again, it just falls into the, we're making this financial decision on, on what's the right thing to do um, and I'm proud to do it. Thank you. Anything else for Ms. Simmons? Oh, I think Ms. Simmons uh, was derelict in her duties here. I was. Um, I did I'm remiss in, in thanking one person who had a ton to do with this budget, and that's our county administrator, Amy Folsom, who is the one who gets all those groups together and kind of leads us in, in making sure that we're on the right path. And I just, it's been an awesome budget process to work with her this year, so I just wanted to say that publicly. Yeah, and, and yeah, thank you to our administrator and every other person, uh, elected official that, um, you know, countywide elected officials that uh, worked on this budget and, uh, y you know, did uh, did their part to make sure that um, as an entity, as a team, we're moving forward in the best way possible. Anything else? All right, could I have a motion, please? I would I'll move, make a motion. This is Commissioner Williams. I'd move approval of um, the 2021 budget. I'll second that motion to adopt, uh, for the resolution to adopt and appropriate the 2021 budget. All right, with that, I will call the roll. Uh, Commissioner Bremer. Aye. Commissioner Vanderwerf. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Mr. Vice Chair. Nay. And the chair votes aye. That passes four to one with uh, Commissioner Gonzalez in dissent.